Okay, so today we are uh, replacing a submersible well pump. Uh, we've already pulled the other one, as you can see by uh, how dirty I am. Um, and we today have a 140 foot, actually 145 foot uh, deep well that's producing uh, 30 gallons a minute, but it's incredibly muddy. So we're gonna do a few things today to try and fix that. Uh, first is the old one uh, poorly installed. They used a uh, 14 gauge wire that was not a true su uh, su submersible wire. We're going to be using uh, 10 gauge um, because that's uh, what's required for the amp draw of this pump. Uh, we are using a 20 gallon per minute uh, half, horse, uh, half horsepower uh, McDonald's um, pump, a high quality pump that uh, and we will only be using um, stainless steel for our barbs. I never use, uh, I only use brass or stainless steel. Um, you know, I never use plastic. It'll break in a heartbeat. Uh, we are going to be using one inch ABS uh, and we're going to be using the like, 10 gauge and then we're going to be using uh, back there is safety rope. You always want to tie off your pump because uh, if let's say for instance this one here broke on us um, as we were trying to pull it up off the wellhead luckily we had a hold of the wire and because of that uh, we it did not drop into the well but if we'd had a safety rope you know not only does it make it easier to pull it um, especially if you have a, uh, a rope pull machine um, you know it, it, it really adds to the security of the Okay, so we're putting on our barbed. I use what we call a long shank. Uh, they come in short shanks, but uh, on this particular one, this is a high tension point. We will be adding uh, torque uh, arresters to this, but um, this one here, you really want to go long shank. And make sure you use a high quality uh, Teflon sealant. And uh, we'll show you the next part in a second. Okay, so now we're going to fit our pipe. Now this is a uh, rigid ABS and sometimes uh, it's kind of hard to get the uh, ABS all the way down the shank. So an easy technique is to very lightly heat the inside of the, uh, the pipe. So we're going to do that here in a second. Alright, so we're just going to get it warm enough that uh, it makes it pliable. Plus, when it hardens, it's going to uh, actually make its bond stronger because it'll uh, it will tighten around the barbs. So we're going to let that cool, and then we're going to use a uh, high quality stainless steel uh, high quality stainless steel hose clamps. And uh, once I get all these on, I'll show you the tricks and, and about not putting them in the wrong spot. So, cut. Okay, so uh, if you notice here, I've got my safety rope hook here. My wires are on this side over here. And so you're going to put the uh, heads of your pipe clamps over on this side. Uh, this is because you don't want your wires near the heads and you don't want your rope near it. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to ensure that nothing is going to uh, have any type of issues with these these clamps. We're going to wrap this. I use uh, the large electrical tape on on this particular one just so that you know you're not wrapping it 500 times. But you want to make sure that they're flat and that they're secure. So if anything does rub it's, it's uh, only going to be rubbing on a soft surface, not rubbing on something that can cut your wire or cut your rope. Okay, so uh, next is our wiring. Uh, first, we're going to be using heat shrinks, good quality heat shrinks. And uh, we're going to be wanting to crimp our, uh, our wire connections here first. But we're not just going to crimp them, we're also going to solder them. Uh, because there's a lot of weight that's going to be uh, on this and potentially if everything failed 
this would be the weakest point. We want to make this very strong so that uh, if you had to grab the wire, uh, you could and lift it up out of the uh, well with that. So uh, we're going to solder these and then we're going to shrink our uh, heat shrinks around it and we'll show you that here in a second. Okay, so uh, all we're doing is lightly heating it. We're not trying to uh, melt the, uh, uh, the insulation or anything. We want to make sure that we get a lot of solder right in there. So we've got a, a welded connection that's not going to come loose. So now, we're going to carefully slide these over so that they're uh, dead center. And you're going to wave your, your heat source very gently. You're going to start in the middle and work your way out because there's a uh, silicone type stuff that's in there that you want it to spread all the way out. You want it to actually ooze out of the end. That's how you know uh, you've got a good quality seal. So we'll just do the rest of them just like that and uh, we'll show you the next step here in a second. Okay, so we're gonna drop it. And it's pretty easy. You wanna make sure that your safety rope is free. You see I've got my uh, wire uh, taped off about every 10 feet. Um, so that way we don't have a lot of pull on the wire. But, uh, so we're just going to keep dropping it until I get to the point that uh, I want. Now, what you'll see is uh, I haven't cut my wire. And over here, I have not cut my pipe. That's because uh, I don't know what depth I want. We're just gonna be testing everything. We're gonna be testing everything at first. So uh, make sure that uh, you do it that way. And we'll show you uh, what it looks like here. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we've got it about uh, 80 feet at this point. And it's pretty dirty, but um, because we've stirred up the well, we are just gonna let it run for five minutes and we're gonna see if it gets any better. Uh, if it does not get any better, then we're going to drop it down some more and uh, see if it makes it uh, worse. Um, at about 80 feet, we're also going to just do a quick check on the uh, static level. The well head shows 30 gallon, I mean 30 feet down for the static level. We'll probably drop a, uh, a weight down, make sure that we're right around the 30. Uh, make sure that something hasn't changed with the well over time. Uh, if we see a rapid drop in the uh, the static level after it's been on for five minutes, then it tells me that uh, something has changed about the well and that uh, we're going to have to make some other adjustments. But um, so right now we'll, we'll wait until this clears up and we'll show you some more. Okay, so now we are at about 140 feet deep. Uh, we started at 80 and you saw the uh, water color pretty dirty the last one was set at uh, 100 feet and uh, was incredibly dirty we uh, we didn't really start getting cleaner water until we were about 120 uh, we're at 140 and we're gonna check to see if maybe we need to go back up maybe uh, one or two feet but uh, so far this is how you uh, check it 